Good morning. Good morning, everyone. Welcome back to the digital virtual space for the Center of Spiritual Living Los Angeles. My name is James Harper. It's always a pleasure to be with y'all. Missed you guys. Um, uh, let's start off the service with a little bit of sunshine, shall we? Son, James Harper. Amen to that. Good morning. Good morning. So wonderful to have you back with us. Always great to be here, Keith. It's always great to have you here and um, regaling in the sunshine for us, both literally and metaphorically, correct? Yes. Yes. Well, I know you're in the land of Southern California, still in your bedroom studio there, as I am in my former uh, guest bedroom, now office studio. And um, even though spring is here, um, it went from sunshine to gloomy to sunshine to back to gloomy now. So we'll, through this morning message and time that we're sharing together, we'll bring in the sun. And no matter what's going on in the outer world, we are blessed to be together in this world, correct? Yes, emanating sunshine within our community and ourselves. That's right. Let the sun out, baby. Let your light shine. This little light oh mine. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You gonna let it shine. I, I, I said let so what a good way to kick us off this morning, right? <laughs> as we choose to live in joy today, as we have our service for April 3rd in the year 2022. So I look forward to all the wonderful music that you have for us today, James. Me too. Yeah, so see you in just a moment. See you soon. Good. So good morning, everyone. I'm Reverend Dr. Keith Cox, and I am the spiritual leader here at the Center for Spiritual Living Los Angeles. And welcome to our Sunday morning celebration service. As James shared earlier, as he welcomed us into this space, I'm sorry, I just got distracted by the most beautiful bird that landed on the window, which is a sign that there is spring hoping eternal for all of us. But as James stated, we welcome you into this virtual space 
that we call home at the moment um, as a result of all that has unfolded in the world. And so we move into an opening up to the spring, the season of spring in our life right now. And today's service and message and music will all be focused on spring and renewal and rebirth and looking at life through the lens of that which is renewed as it is new through us. And so I welcome you into our space today. We are a community known as the Center for Spiritual Living Los Angeles, and we've been coming together for a little over 30 years now in the land of Los Angeles to commune with the very power and the presence that exists within each and every one of us. It's known by many different names. It's known as Source, the thing itself, Beulah, Elizabeth, James, Keith, Sandy, each one of your names, as well as that infamous three-letter word, God. We learn in this teaching, this philosophy, this faith, this way of life known as the science of mind, that it matters not what you call the power, but it matters that we call on it greatly, not as some outside power inviting it in to do its magical, mystical thing through us, but as a power that we're imbued with. It is, yes, both external as well as internal because it's infinite by nature. We experience and express it and process it by means of our thought, our belief, our actions, our reactions, and our interactions with the very thing itself. We come together as a community to welcome one, all expressions of life, and welcome all. No matter your gender, your race, your color, your creed, your religion, your gender expression, your sexual orientation, none of this matters in the context of the differences of humanity because we honor and celebrate the stamp of individuality that's been placed upon you, that makes you so unique and special in this world. And so we honor you, we welcome you, we celebrate you, we invite you in and know that together, when we awaken ourselves to it, we get to experience and express the oneness of life in a new way. And so without further ado, let's move into our service for today where I will have some uh, multimedia slides for us to look at and we will move right into that. So we are known as the Center for Spiritual Living Los Angeles. And we come together each and every Sunday morning to recognize and honor this power that is within us. We're going to move right into our morning ritual today, and you'll see that even as I continue to speak of the renewal of life itself and looking at things through a new lens, I made a very conscious decision today to use and to continue to use the slides from the last few weeks to continue to bring into our remembrance what is unfolding in Ukraine right now. Our ritual is called Calling in the Light. And so I invite us all as we perform the ceremony today, the ceremony to promote universal consciousness of life, a ceremony, a ritual, which acknowledges that all peoples and all faiths, all sentient beings come from the one great universal presence, which we call spirit. The purpose of this ritual is to draw into our gathering a more conscious awareness of our oneness and a remembrance that the light of the divine exists in and as all sentient beings. I invite us each to begin to look into the flickering flame on the screen. We know this to be light. We know the definition of light is that which we are seeing. But in the practice of the science of mind, the philosophy, faith, and way of life that we practice here, which includes and many other metaphysical, philosophical approaches to life, Light is considered one of the qualities of the divine that exists and that you and I and all sentient beings are imbued with. In the book, The Science of Mind, Dr. Ernest Holmes defines light in this way. He says, in flashes of illumination, the inspired have seen into the very center of reality. 
and brought back with them a distinct impression of what they've seen and felt. It's a glimpse of this reality when consciously used that illumines the whole being with a flood of light. And so as we move into our service today, I invite each of us to remember the first time we felt this illumination from the very center of reality, that light within us, that is the light that permeates all. It is that which is celestial by nature. And look at the acronym for light, which is living in God's healing truth. And to remember that the God we speak of is an impersonal, omniscient, omnipresent, infinite power. That which is the creative force behind all. And so as we look at this candle today, this flickering flame, the light, let's choose to call it the healing candle. Healing in terms of metaphysics is the revelation of an awakening and awareness of the oneness of life itself. It's an awakening and an awareness of the power that exists within us. And so I invite us all to look into this light and to take a moment and to place anyone, and certainly the people that are experiencing war, whether that's in the Ukraine or within their own household or within their own mind, and let's place them intentionally and purposefully and consciously into this healing light. Knowing that it's through this intention that they shall experience the eternal and everlasting love of the divine in a new way. Continuing with this ritual, let's choose to know that peace is prevailing on our planet, beginning with inside each one of us by remembering that peace is within. It's that inner state of calmness. And so through this inner state of calmness, let's together state this prayer of protection for ourselves and all beings of light on the planet. The light of God surrounds me. For the love of God enfolds me. The power of God protects me as the presence of God watches over me. For the mind of God guides me. The life of God flows through me. As the laws of God direct me, the power of God abides within me. For the joy of God uplifts me, and the strength of God renews me, as the beauty of God inspires me, remembering that wherever I am, God is. This prayer was written by James Freeman for all soldiers during World War II. It's a powerful today as it was then. Let's let the healing begin. James will come on the screen now and take us through the song Calling in the Light. I invite you to sing along. It's a call and response song and the lyrics are on the screen.
in my heart I am free I am spirit I am soul all together we are whole calling in the light calling in the light calling in the light of love calling in the light calling in So it is. Ah, beautiful. Thank you, James. Thank you. Thank you. So just stay on for just a moment. I just want to say hello to everyone here today once again, and thank you all for being here. If you're here for the first time, know that you're honored and celebrated and acknowledged for who you are as you are in this very moment. As a community, it's our um, desire to honor you and welcome you on your journey of finding your personal self-empowerment through a spiritual awakening. So whether you're joining us today through Zoom or through Facebook or through another channel, probably our YouTube channel, then know that um, you're in the perfect and right place right where you are today. And for that, I celebrate you. James, you have a song for us that you're going to do now. I do, I do. This I do, I do. I do, I do. Not That's that the one. title. <laughs> it's <laughs> called Make You Feel My Love. Um, um, already feeling it. Uh, yeah, this, I don't know, this season, uh, things are picking up back again and, uh, things are getting a little bit more stressful. And this song always reminds me to look for the love and feel the love, whether that's in our own divinity or the divinity of, of, uh, the universe or our loved ones, um, et cetera. Wonderful. Joy. When the rain is blowing And the whole world is on your case I could offer you a warm embrace To make you feel my love When the evening shadows and the stars appear And there's no one there to dry your tears I could hold you for a million years To make you feel my love I know you haven't made your mind up yet But I will never do you wrong Crawling down the avenue No, there's nothing that I wouldn't do To make you feel Stop. 
I can make you happy, make your dreams come true. No, there's nothing that I wouldn't do. Go to the ends of the earth for you to make you feel my To make you feel my love To make you feel my love Well, I can see why that song brings you great comfort. Right? Hope you all are right. It's a very soothing and uh, meaningful. Yeah. Yeah. So, um, yeah, and it means thing to me. It means things on a different level. So to make you feel my love, both that human love that we all share, right, and then there is that agape love, the love of the divine, the self givingness of spirit. Ernest Holmes calls it the love of the divine. That it is. Right. That's what we're all imbued with. Thank you. Thank you, James, for um, for that beautiful message. That's from your heart. Thank you. Thank you. You're welcome. All right, see you in a bit. What a great way to cue up our message this morning to um, know that there are these moments when we feel wonderful and we feel like we need to reconnect to love and we feel as if we've been a bit melancholy. That really is the whole um, nature of renewal, of moving through seasons, if you will, in the um, physical world and today I'm going to talk of that from a metaphysical perspective. I have slides for us today and so I encourage you to sit back and to enjoy the message and the visual that I have for all of us. And so here we go. And so of course I will begin with our slide of the Center for Spiritual Living Supporting individuals finding their personal self-empowerment through a spiritual awakening. May each and every one of us find that new spiritual awakening today. I'm going to begin today by sharing a story that many of us have heard before. And it, um, the intent is to have it bring us a bit of joy and to open up to um, humor and fun and the visuals of life itself. A man was driving along the highway. When he saw the Easter rabbit hopping across the middle of the road, he swerved to avoid hitting the rabbit. But unfortunately, the Easter bunny jumped in front of the car and was struck by his car. The basket of eggs and candy the rabbit was carrying went flying all over the place. The driver, being a sensitive man, as well as an animal lover, pulled over to the side of the road and got out to see what had become of the rabbit carrying the basket. Much to his dismay, the colorful rabbit was dead. The driver felt so awful he began to cry. A woman driving down the highway saw the man crying on the side of the road and pulled over. She stepped out of her car and asked the man what was wrong. I feel terrible, he explained. I accidentally he hit the Easter rabbit and killed it. Children will be so disappointed, what should I do? The woman told the man not to worry. She knew what to do, so she went to her car trunk and pulled out a spray can. She walked over to the dead limp rabbit and sprayed the contents of the can onto the furry animal. Miraculously, the Easter Bunny came to life, jumped up, picked up the spilled eggs and candy and waved its paw at the two, hum two humans and hopped down the road. About a hundred feet away, the Easter rabbit stopped turning around, waved, and hopped down the road again. And then another hundred feet away, he turned again, waved, and hopped another hundred feet, turned and waved. The man was astonished. He couldn't figure out what substance could be in the woman's spray can. He ran over to the woman and asked, what's in your spray can? What could you have sprayed on the Easter Bunny to bring it back to life? And the woman turned the can around so that the man could read the label and it said, hair spray. It restores life to dead hair and adds a permanent wave. 
Now, I know you're all chuckling and laughing where you are, can hear it, even though you've heard this story time and time again. But what it brings to mind for me is not only that Easter is around the corner, but our ability to see things in a new way and to be lighthearted in the state of renewal and restoration because spring is in the air. The spring equinox we're talking about is a festival of awakening and rebirth, if you will. It's a joyful holiday that is centered around rebirth and regrowth. It's the arrival of spring right now. The earth is coming alive again, and I'm sure each and every one of you, just like me, as you're out walking about, you can see the flowers popping up, the growth everywhere. You can feel it in the air. The dark months, if we've had those, to say the case here in Southern California, even though we have, are now beginning to end, and we're moving into the warmth of the light. The sun will continue to grow until the summer solstice, when it begins to turn inward again. With the spring equinox, which happened here on March 20th, your spirit is too waking up with new ideas and new dreams for your life. It's fresh, warm energy has the power to make you feel alive and inspired. The inspiring spring equinox is encouraging each and every one of us to choose to be reborn. And so today I invite all of us to embrace this new beginning, to tap into this spring energy which will fuel our growth as the days get longer and the sun gets, the sun grows warmer. Spring is here and it is the month of April. Our theme for the month is it's time for a spring awakening. It's time for a spring awakening. Today, spring represents a new day. It's the dawn in the wheel of the year. A new sun is rising. Life is waking up in the warm sunlight and your spirit, should you allow that to happen, feels ready to make a fresh start. This time of year, our spirit is bright and coming alive with new ideas. It's a time to feel inspired and excited to try new things. So today, let's let today be the day that we open ourselves up to try on new ideas, new beliefs, a new way of looking at things in life. In the, on the website from the Personal Wellness Center, known as Mind, Body, and Spirit, this is written in regards to how we are to approach spring, a time for renewal written by Veronica Correa. She says, spring is a time for renewal, growth, and expansion. We can feel it in the air. Even though we can do this at any time of the year, it feels just right during spring. We seem to have that extra energy and focus to get physically active, take action, and create change. Spring is a great time to envision endless possibilities, and to use our creative gifts to reach new levels of achievement, wellness, happiness, and success. Imagine that if we were to focus just simply maybe on one of those areas and reach new levels of either achievement or wellness or happiness or success, how much better life could be. Veronica goes on to write, spring is a good time to let go of the old and make room for the new. This can apply to the traditional spring cleaning, of course, but most importantly, we have the option to apply it to letting go of old grudges, resentments, and anger that holds us back from enjoying inner peace and more happiness in our lives. When we hold on to the old, we keep ruminating and revisiting old wounds and they keep us stuck. And sometimes we don't even know it. But when we choose to let go of the old, we make room for the new. And in so doing, we open doors to endless possibilities that are waiting for us. Today, I invite us all to open our minds to be open to what endless possibilities are waiting for us. It's time for a spring 
awakening. And to know that a spring awakening is actually a spiritual awakening. A spiritual awakening is that which is our opening up and experiencing a new perspective in regards to our spirituality. Well, what is spiritual? In the book, The Science of Mind, Dr. Holmes defines spiritual as the atmosphere of God. In other words, that which is spiritual is that power, that presence, that energy field that exists within you and me. It's that love that James was singing of earlier. It's that which is within us that is infinite, unbounded, and impersonal. It is the very thing that places the stamp of individuality upon you and upon me. Can we become more spiritual? I can hear our founding minister, Dr. David Walker, say no. We are as spiritual as we can ever be. However, we certainly can experience more of that spiritual nature that we have. And how do we do that? We do that through our thoughts, through our beliefs, through our actions, through our reactions and interactions with the very thing itself. And by building a stronger faith musculature in the power itself and knowing that it reflects back to us through us the very thing itself to the degree that we become conscious of what it is as us in life itself so that our journey of awakening is one of fine tuning our state of mind it's one just as we do in spring of planting seeds what seeds are we here to plant of whatever it is that's new in your life that you would like to experience? Whatever it is that's new in your life that you would like to have as an experience once you let go of those old grudges, resentments, things of the past. It's seeds of possibilities, those endless possibilities that are waiting for us in life. It could simply be seeds that are reflection of the innate qualities of the divine that exist within you and within me, which are peace and power and beauty and joy and light and life and love and wisdom. And to remember that inherent with every seed already is the fulfillment of its desire just as within seed of intention. That today, as you and I choose to live in a greater state of illumination as a result of our choosing to plant these seeds, then we get to bring forth more light in the world. And so today, let's begin to imagine ourselves, just as we see Snoopy and his little pal doing on the screen, planting seeds in our consciousness, in our mind of peace, and power, and beauty, and joy, and light, and life, and love, and wisdom. And then let that wisdom be the guide to let them be, so that they may take root, so that they may take hold, so that they may then blossom through the fertile soil of creation and become real in our lives. Ours in life is to plant the seed, to have the faith and to trust the process. You and I are on a journey of spiritual awakening every single day. And through that, we find our personal self-empowerment. And today, let's choose to do that in a new way, unlike ever before. And to know that as we awaken, we make a difference on the planet. I love this quote here that says, each time a new person awakens to the universal truth, the whole of humanity rises a notch. The world itself is awakening. How do we do that? We do that by emanating. We do that by expressing. We do that by becoming conscious of that which we are vibrating and setting out into the world. I love this article that addresses this by Reverend Dr. Petra Wells. It says, we are here to live from a higher vibration day by day by day. It writes, it states, she writes, physicists are starting to come together around the notion that everything 
is created from some sort of vibrating energy. This is how we can get something out of nothing. Of course, others have known this for centuries and we've heard it before. Countless shamans and spiritual teachers have talked about the need to raise our vibrational rate to that of love and peace. And I'm gonna add power and beauty and joy and light and life and wisdom. And that when we do that, something new emerges through that fertile soil of creation, different from what came before. It behooves us then to ask ourselves, what is the vibrational rate or frequency of our life? Is it fear, anger, distrust? For fear, anger, distrust are all lower frequencies. So our negativity, complaint, and blame. When this is our primary conversation and thought patterns, we're definitely contributing to the lower, to lowering the vibrational rate of our own lives and those around us. Look at the picture on the screen. However, on the other hand, isn't it nice to be around people who are energetic, positive, in love with life and generally happy? That's because they're vibrating at a higher rate. This higher frequency is stimulating, engaging, and uplifting. Love, enthusiasm, joy, and even a positive sense of power all cause us to vibrate at a higher rate. The primary thing for us to remember is that this vibrational rate is not determined by what's outside. It's by what's inside. Neuroscientists tell us that it's much better to not let ourselves go into those negative states, but rather to keep our mind fixed on the positive, regardless of what's happening around us. In this way, we determine what's going on in our minds. What we focus on raises or lowers our vibrational rate. Thus, consciousness is cause. Now it does seem to help when we not only become a generator of these higher frequencies, but we also surround ourselves with people and places that vibrate at a higher rate. This helps reinforce our own vibration and we can actually let it lift us higher. Just like we cannot let outside vibrations get us down, we can consciously choose to be around and allow higher vibrations to lift us up. And there is mounting evidence from science agreeing with what we've known from spirituality all along, that our vibration adds or subtracts, lifts or lowers the vibrational rate of the whole. It's like an orchestra that's in tune and playing together or being drugged down by instruments that are out of tune and out of step with the rest. And so let's look at the image on the screen again. Each time a new person, you, me, all of us, just imagine all of us together, awakens to this universal truth that we indeed have power in life. The whole humanity rises a notch. The world is awakening. And so I ask you, when is the time to do this? When is the time for you and I to tune into a higher vibrational frequency? Well, I think we know the answer to that. The time is now. The Buddha tells us there's only one time when it's essential to awaken, and that time is right now. And so today I invite each and every one of us to open up to awaken to a higher vibrational frequency that we're not only emitting and emanating and sending forth out into the world, but open ourselves up to attract it back into us at an even higher vibrational frequency and let the cycle continue and continue and continue. To remember that when you begin to awaken, layers of our false self will be shed. You may experience anger, fear, anxiety, and depression right away, but ride the wave. Allow these experiences to exit your system because your false self, your ego, is being shed just like a snake skin so that your true self, your spirit, can be born or reborn today. Let's all embrace 
this process. And remember that when spring comes, even the false spring of where it's been warm and then it's cold again and then warm again, know that there are no problems here except where to be happiest. And where are we called to be happiest? In the now. And to remember, just as Deepak Chopra tells us, that this power, the source of life, God, descends to earth like fresh spring rain. And at every level, its grace is received differently. We're all on our own unique path. For some, this awakening, it feels like love. For others, like salvation. It feels like safety and warmth from one level, like coming home at another. And so as you and I each choose collectively and individually to raise our vibrational frequency to an awakening, be aware that it may and will look different for others because every single individual is on their own journey of finding personal self-empowerment through a spiritual awakening. I love this poem by Helen Steiner Rice, the poet laureate of inspirational verse in regards to what I'm speaking of. And she writes, God, remembering that impersonal, infinite, omniscient power. God, give us eyes to see the beauty of the spring and to behold your majesty in every living thing. And may we see in lacy leaves and every budding flower the hand that rules the universe with gentleness and power. And may this Easter grandeur that spring lavishly imparts awaken faded flowers of faith lying dormant in our hearts. And give us ears to hear, dear God, the springtime song of birds with messages more meaningful than man's often empty words, telling human beings who are lost in the dark despair, be like us and do not worry, for God has you in his care. Now let's remember to take this poem as it's intentional, not to get caught up in the words of his or he or God, but in the sense that there is this power, this presence that is infinite by nature, calling for us to become more and more and more of it consciously, that is the healing revelation part of it. And the way that we do that is by renewing and restoring ourselves in its presence itself. One way to do that is by engaging in a spiritual practice of meditation. I love this article that says, Awaken to Spring, Three Steps to Use the Energy of the Season in Your Meditations. It tells us here from the Chopra Center that the qualities that you associate with spring center on renewal. Just as nature renews itself with the awakening of spring, so can you. Renewal is a quality of consciousness that permeates body, mind, and spirit. And it's important for us to remember as we step into the state of renewal, the way that it will transpire itself is in the body. For the renewal in the body involves feeling fresh, energetic, and youthful. Renewal in the mind is about new creative possibilities. Renewal in the spirit is about living from your source in pure consciousness. It tells us here that there's no specific reason for these qualities to emerge in you, but spring, as part of nature's annual cycle, triggers a desire for renewal and motivates each one of us to shed the past. For every awakening, every awakening is like inviting springtime into your life. And so today, let's, you and I, invite springtime into our life in a new way. Let's open up to heal in a new way, whether it's through the act of meditation or prayer or receptivity or just seeing life from a new perspective. It tells us on the screen that it's time to renew, time to thrive, time to heal, time to transform and invest in vibrant economics, meaning stepping into the vibrancy of the abundance of the good that exists in the world today. And it's calling to express itself in greater ways than ever before by means of you, 
and by means of life. And we do that by making a conscious choice of letting go of the past, opening to up to what is possible, and making a decision to enjoy life today. This spring, April 3rd, in the year 2022. And let's remember, we're here to be powerful. And so it is. James will come back and continue this in song. The heart is a bloom. So wonderful. I was fighting a sneeze. <laughs> Are you verklempt, Keith? <laughs> I'm, I'm, I'm definitely verklempt. I'm fighting a sneeze. I just love that song. Yeah, I, I, it's, it's so cool. Uh, Travis actually suggested that we do it this week, and it was such. It was so fitting for what you were just talking about. Yeah. Seeing, seeing the beauty in the spring, and the, it, and even the imagery in that song is so right. Cool. It just gives us a perspective of um, 
um, that we have a choice, right? It's a beautiful day. And as you were singing it, the sun definitely um, was coming out. So it's back out here in the land of Los Angeles. So let's go. Um, wonderful. James, it's always so fantastic to have you here with us. And I can't wait to have you with us in person. I hear uh, we're so. coming back to being in person. I'm so Well, excited. we're going to be back on Easter Sunday. We've got one day planned for sure. One day. So, hey, it's uh, a start. And then we'll see after that. It starts with one. Yes. So Awesome. Yes. Wonderful. So, so thank you. Thank you. Thank you so much. So now you'll see on the screen is the... Um, ways to support our ministry through conscious giving um, know that as we navigate these times and continue to do so your financial support is deeply appreciated and acknowledged and um, is all put to good use and so the ways to do that is you can go to our website csl-la.org and click on donate or to the app in the app store center for spiritual living los angeles and click on the upper left bars or you can mail in the check our address is 1200 north library avenue west hollywood california or my phone number's on the screen should you desire to call me. You can do that at 310-963-1653. I can handle that privately. As we all take a moment to support our community financially, James will come back onto the screen and take us through our conscious giving song called Love Is My Decision. Please feel free to sing along during this time. <laughs> to me to give up my heart love is my decision no one else can tell me to start and once I decide to change my mind the source will show me how Right here, right now mm. And so it is. Thank you, James. Thank you. So we just want to give you a couple of updates. You will know that um, you can find all of this on our website and through our weekly e-newsletter that goes out the uh, first part of the week. If you'd like to receive that, please feel free to sign up to do that. There is a Wednesday morning meditation that takes place Wednesday morning at 8.30 to about 8.50 a.m. You can join live on that without turning your camera on and or um, just listen at a later date through our YouTube channel. There's a daily text that goes out that is a grounding text that um, is... Um, just a reminder to remember who we are once again spiritually. It goes out every morning at 7.30 a.m. You can also sign up for that through our website. Our app in the App Store is a wonderful resource for information as well. Going back to the text, we're also now animating those in a wonderful way to be visually stimulating as they're posted on social media. We'd love to have you follow us on social media. We have a page on both Facebook and Instagram as well as a YouTube channel. All of that information can be found um, on our website. Um, as James said, we are planning to be back in our home building on Easter Sunday. We're working out some logistics on all of that, but our plan is to be there. So stay tuned for that. Also, please reach out to your friends and former members or people that used to come here. And we'd love to um, fill that place up and um, do what we can to make it a really wonderful reconnecting day, a day of renewal and a day of restoration. And so a big thank you to James and to Travis Smith for um, great audio um, support as well as wonderful musical suggestions. A big thank you to Robert Hensley who is here today doing our video as well as our connection to social media Facebook. It also just went through a week of a lot of classes on learning new things in social media. So great things are unfolding here at the Center for Spiritual Living Los Angeles. A big thank you to each one of you for being here today and to for bringing your presence into this virtual space and knowing that who you are and what you are matters on this planet both individually and collectively we are indeed all making a difference and so the message and the music and the um, information that was shared today may it be a tool for inspiration for each and every one of us as we continue to navigate life itself and so i'm going to close with a meditation slash affirmation slash spiritual mind treatment 
at the end of that, we will say um, bid adieu to those that are here through Facebook. And then if you're here on Zoom, we'll stay on for just a moment and say a brief hello in a chat. And so let's, let's make that happen. And so if you're in a place that's comfortable for you, I invite you to close your eyes. Just feel the presence of life itself. And just as Helen Steiner Rice shared, I adapt this to affirm that today we have eyes to see the beauty of spring. And we behold the majesty of the divine in life itself and every living thing. We see the lacy leaves and every budding flower that is a result of the hand of the divine that rules the universe with gentleness and with power that on this day of the month of the resurrection, we let it be a reminder to us that this Easter grandeur that spring lavishly imparts upon us awakens within us as if faded flowers of faith have previously been there, lying dormant in our hearts and what comes to life is a newfound, restored acceptance the power that is within us and a faith of this power as it does its miraculous and mystical things through us. As it gives us ears to hear, we hear the power through the springtime song of the birds as they message more meaningful to us than oftentimes the human's empty words. And so today we rise out of the darkness through the fertile soil of creation, knowing with every thought, action, reaction, and interaction of life itself that life is good. And we are indeed very, very good in it as it. We inhale, feeling the power and the presence, and exhale. Inhaling again, anchoring this into our reality. Exhaling, freeing it to the law of creation. We let it be, and so it is. Thank you all so very much. May you have a blessed day, a wonderful week, and continue to shine and shed your light, because your light makes a difference. Thank you.